trust you're all well and doing excellent today. Um, I was live yesterday. It is Domestic Abuse Awareness Month, this month of October. So I will be doing a video. My plan is to do a video daily addressing different issues around DV. Okay, yesterday we looked at the traits you know different traits that an abuser would have you know and how to recognize them so i am a certified coach i'm a certified life coach i can work with um, everyone all right so however i specialize in working with families and relationship issues at the moment so i look at issues around your personal life as well as your professional life so any issues that come around those areas my aim is to help you resolve those issues and look for discover ways you know equip you with tools and strategies that would help you foster a healthy environment in your in your life either personal life or professional life so i am a certified life coach right so because it's domestic um, abuse awareness month the topics i'm talking about live this month will be around domestic uh, violence and all of that and how to recognize the signs of an abuser yesterday we looked at various signs things you would see either in a man or woman some people think abusers are mainly men no some women do abuse as well some women are guilty of this so it's both ways so either you are, you are male or female if you recognize any of those traits in yourself or anyone there is help available because you are perpetrating this on a victim and these victims sometimes end up feeling helpless and they feel like they are alone in this situation and no one to go to and if you are a victim, you are experiencing this in your life, please reach out, okay? There is help available for you. You don't have to go through this. There is help available. So if you missed yesterday's live, go over it. I also talked about um, some statistics, you know. I looked at the statistics around DV and all of that and how it affects both men and women. So... With every thing that is negative, there is a positive side, right? Today, I'm going to be looking at the goals, what each person should aim to be, you know, your spouse. If you're in a relationship, what are the things you need to do to ensure you, you have, you know, you live harmoniously with your spouse to, to prevent all these problems and things like that? So we're going to be looking at that today, you know, I'm not focusing only on the negative because as a family and relationship coach, my aim is to help you foster, ensure you have a healthy environment, healthy relationship, you know, where you can both, you know, take care of each other and also bring up your children, which is very important. So the first trait I'm going to be talking about today is I'm going to be looking down because my notes are down here. I don't want to miss any of the points I've written down. Partnership. Okay, in any relationship, you must see each other as equal. Not one thinking they are higher than the other. You know, I've dealt with clients, I've seen clients who feel the relationship is 70-30. Where the man has, you know, 70% advantage over the woman. The man feels, you know, he, responsibility lies more with the woman to ensure the home is okay and everything. And he feels that he is higher. And on the other hand, some women feel that way as well. So the blame is not going to any particular gender. So partnership, ensure you take care of your own responsibilities. You know, you must see each other as equal. Take care of the household chores together. Where did this belief come from that the woman has to take care of everything that concerns the house? 
is a man not living in the house as well. <laughs> he lives in the house. They both live in the house. So take partnership, you know, be, become partners. Take care of your home together, especially some cultures, you know. When it comes to DV and all of this, different things are responsible. The attitudes we have developed over time, the beliefs, you know, developed over time as well, either by culture, the environment we grew up in, you know, and very, there are various factors involved. So if you are going through or you have to deal with any of these situations, there is hope. Hope is not lost. You know, we have to, as a coach, what I do is I look at the beliefs, the belief system each person has and how to remove those limiting beliefs. Once those beliefs are removed, you know, and replace them with new beliefs, you find out that your home becomes a new place and you begin to wonder, is this the same person I had all these years? So if you have, if you are experiencing any of this, don't lose hope. Okay. There's help available. That's why I'm making my videos. I make my videos regularly to make people reach out to people out there so they know that look there is help available don't despair so partnership is one and the second one is you want somebody who is a lover okay somebody who cares for you at all times he or she nurtures you ensures that you are fine emotionally okay they allow you express yourself and you also feel free to express yourself in that relationship. Okay. They, um, there's physical touch involved without actually thinking it will lead anywhere. Just take nurturing you, you nurture each other for the sake of it, not because you want anything else. You know what I mean? So any relationship, you should, you should have that um, freedom to express yourself emotionally. Yes? So when you are able to express yourself, you feel free without being judged. So that's another trait. Somebody who is a lover, somebody who is your partner, somebody who also is a good parent. You are a good parent. You don't leave the responsibility of parenting the children to your partner. You don't say, <laughs> you know, I, I, I always refer to my culture. You know, I've come from a culture where if, if everything goes well with the children, they say, oh, well done to the dad. You're a good father. You've done a good job. But if anything happens and the children start to misbehave, they say it's the mom's fault. Is the woman she hasn't done her job why <laughs> the African culture why the blame goes to the woman so if you have that kind of upbringing where in your home your culture you know you've lived you've grown up believing that the woman is to blame and then you get married you take that belief system into your home and then you expect the woman to discipline the children, to do everything. And then she starts to get weary and tired and, you know, stressed out. No, that shouldn't be. If you are doing that, you need, and you're listening to my message, find a way of starting to change, you know, gradually. Because it, in the long run, you will benefit because you will see the difference in your children. And you will see the difference in your wife as well. She become happier, you know, and more responsive to you and all of that because you are taking responsive, you, you are being responsible, taking responsibility for the things you have to do when you have to do them. Don't be the bad soldier, the person, the woman, every time the children misbehave, they say, okay, I'm going to call your dad. It makes you look like the bad person. No. The woman shouldn't have to do that. Say, I'm going to call your dad. Then that's when the children behave and say, oh, mom, please. Or you make the woman have to say, I will have to tell your dad this when he gets back. No, that means she's tried everything in her own ability to discipline the children. 
but you only once in a while step in and put the children in line that shouldn't be the case you are both in it together you had these children together so every step of the way you need to be partners in bringing up your children together okay and yep yeah, you negotiate you are able to negotiate together whatever you want to do you are doing it together whatever decisions you have to make you are making those decisions together you don't um, leave this decision to the other person and then when things don't go well you say well you didn't ask me or I told you so we need to avoid using I told you so instead discuss you know talk about it whatever it is in your home discuss with your partner take them along you know make them feel like yes they are with you and you are with them make decisions together you know and if you are both going to agree agree if you are both if you are if you are both not happy or one person is not happy about that decision don't go ahead without your partner wait until you can both agree or you compromise on the issues that way you both know that whatever comes out of it the outcome is both yours not one person saying oh i told you so you shouldn't have done that or you shouldn't have done this and then you have tension in your home and all of that that needs to be avoided okay so the other trait we must all aim to have in our homes with our partners is friendship we must be friends with our spouse you know some are married but they're not friends they're just married we will we, we'll be shocked at what goes out, out goes on out there they're married but not truly friends so the spouse they are in the home together but they spend all their time on their phones on social media you know so they are in the home but not present not fully there with their part partners so that needs to stop if you are doing that and then you begin to wonder why does she behave this way why is she moody or why is he they may not say it but that's why you are you are in the home they can see you and you can see them but you are really not present your mind is somewhere else you are chatting with your friends on your phone you're having fun you're laughing and all of that and you spend so much time on your phone or your laptop on social media generally and then the person your partner your wife or husband right beside you there's a distance though you are sitting together you are in the same room you are not together there's a distance there's a wedge you know that needs to stop as well sometimes we think that these things are not um, important but they are they are they are very important so little gaps you know there are gaps in the wall if there are gaps in the wall irrespective of how tiny that gap is if it's not taken care of it widens and what happens the structure of the building is affected the same thing in marriages in relationships if these little things are not nipped in the board before you know it the relationship is strained and you're like oh but we don't argue we are always in the home together where did this come from <laughs> you know things haven't been taken care of so we need to attend or address these issues now the other tip i'm going to give today is somebody who cheers you on you want to be somebody who cheers your partner on okay you are supportive um, their ambitions okay if they if they want to whatever they want to be or do you are there you are supportive you are encouraging you're an encourager you encourage them to have friends outside okay you encourage them to have a social life you know to get things done even if it's to be at the gym to enroll at a gym you encourage them to be who 
to fulfill purpose, to be who they who they've been created to be. Yeah? So you are an encourager. Be an encourager to your spouse. Don't limit them and say, oh, why do you want to do that? No, don't do that. Or you're always, you know, saying, oh, not again. <laughs> they bring a business idea today and you're like, not another idea. I thought you just spoke about one the other day. It doesn't matter if they, if they bring hundred ideas. As long as you are their partner, they've come to you. You need to make sure you sit with them. Look at the idea, go over it, the pros and the cons, because at the end of the day, is to make your home better. Go over the pros and the cons together and then arrive at your own conclusion. But don't belittle and say, oh, not again, or you call, call names and say, oh, let's see how this will last, how long this will last. That's not good. That's not helping. It's not encouraging. Instead, you are... Um, it can lead into low self-esteem and trust issues will arise because they don't feel like they can come to you with any issues because they will feel judged, they will feel condemned and all of that, you know. So this is another tip I'm going to be leaving with us today. You have already mentioned this, you boost them confidently, their confidence, boost their confidence in whatever um, they want to do, be with them, respect it, respect is very important. If your spouse doesn't respect you, then there's a problem. And you also have, have to respect your, your spouse. It's not one-sided. Some people say the woman have to submit. You submit to one another. Okay, you respect each other. It's not a one-sided thing. All right. So I think that's where I'll be stopping today. And I hope you have um, learned one or two things. And if you knew all this already, and maybe you've let something slip in the past, this is the time to get it up again, get it out again, and start treating your spouse like a king that he is, or like a queen that she is. Don't put each other down. If there's a problem, communicate. Communication is key in any relationship. Okay, as a family and relationships coach, I find that when communication is lacking, then a lot of problems spring out of that. But when we communicate, learn to communicate like adults. We are not happy about a situation, communicate. There's nothing wrong with communicating. I see that there are some people watching. I haven't seen any comments. Do leave a comment and I will appreciate, you know, hearing from you and letting me know how you think or feel about the message. And if you have benefited from me coming on live to share my message today. So tomorrow I will be on live again to talk about a different topic around DV and how to avoid it. So there is help available. Reach out to me. I'm a certified coach. I'm happy to um, help you with tools, help you with strategies to improve your relationship. Thank you once again. Do take care till I come your way again. Bye.